Hey everyone, Golden Ninja 3000 here again. Today I'm reviewing Lego Eternals set number 76155 in Arashem's Shadow. This set has 493 pieces, four minifigures, and it retails for $60 in the US. This was released on October 1st, 2021 as part of the wave of four Eternal sets. And this is our very first Lego Celestial, which is a pretty big deal. And I'm really impressed that Lego went for it and actually made a Celestial because these things are supposed to be enormous in scale. So this sets obviously not to scale because Celestials are supposed to be like 10 times the size of entire planets, but I still think that they captured the design really well. Ajak and Kingo are our exclusive minifigures in this set, so I'm going to start out by looking at Ajak because I think that she has my favorite design of any of the Eternals, and not just in Lego, I mean in the movie too. I really, really like this figure. I think that it's gorgeous. I think they captured the details on her outfit really well. I've complained about like the non-printed arms before because while I don't expect arm printing, it would be nice just because the Eternals have such detailed suits. I don't think it's a problem on Ajak. I actually think here the solid colored arms work pretty well because the rest of her body just has printed gold, so I like it. She also has a brand new face print, something that many of the Eternals are lacking, which is really great because I think it looks exactly like Salma Hayek and I'm really happy with it. The hair piece, um, it, it's okay. Like I, I like this hair piece a lot. This is one of my favorite Lego hair molds. I understand why they chose it because they weren't about to make a new mold for her crown in the movie, but I really wish they would. Um, I'm going to put up a photo of her in the movie right here so you guys can see. The figure looks pretty decent, but Oh my god, if LEGO had invested in a new crown mold, that would have been the greatest thing ever because I just think that it's awesome. Ajak does have an alternate face as well. She's also got some really nice back printing, and I really like this alternate face. Um, I think, again, this face looks exactly like Salma Hayek, and I'm really glad that LEGO made a new face print for her. Ajak does come with this golden spear, which is returning from the Lord of the Rings theme, actually, which looks really good. I don't think this is going to be something that she uses in the movie, because Ajak's superpower is that she can heal anyone, human or eternal, and she can also telepathically communicate with the Celestials. Those are both very difficult powers to represent, um, you know, in Lego form, so I think it makes sense why she doesn't have, you know, any, like, power blasts or something like that. Kingo, on the other hand, does get power blasts. That makes a lot of sense because his superpower is shooting like bolts of cosmic energy from his fingertips, which I think will be really cool. And um, he's played by Kumail Nanjani, so that makes him the very first Desi superhero in the MCU. He's coming just a few months before Kamala Khan makes her debut in the Miss Marvel TV show. And I really love his design. I think that, you know, purple is one of my favorite colors, especially, you know, like Lego's color of purple. And I think that the mixture of dark gray, light purple, and dark purple just works really well, of course, joined by all those golden highlights. And I just really like the design of the Eternals in general. I love all of, you know, the circular kind of theme that they have. And he also gets a new face print, which is, again, very nice because, you know, he is Pakistani. And so... It would have sucked if they had just, you know, reused someone else's face print on him. I really like the face print as well. It's very expressive. So on this one, he just has a big grin. But then the raised eyebrow on this face is just, it, it's just adorable. And I think that it's a really nice face. That being said, I do think it could be improved a little bit. I think that if he had like some stubble or some cheekbones, it would be better because um, Kumail Nanjani does have a very like square jaw after bulking up for Eternals. And he does have stubble in the movie. Like, this face just looks very young for his character, but that also makes it, you know, more versatile. So I'm not really complaining about that. Cersei is played by Gemma Chan, who I absolutely love, which is why it sucks that her minifigure is so bad. Um, I mean, she's not, like, terrible, but it's the problem with all the other, well, most of the other Eternals minifigures. Everything's great until you get to the neck up. The head and hair suck here. But starting with the things that I like, I really like the torso. Using sand green as a print along with the metallic silver looks really good. And this does make her one of, if not the only Eternal to not have... Well, no, sorry. She's not the only Eternal to not have it, but she's one of the only ones without any gold highlights. So that's pretty cool. Again, printed arms, I think, was kind of a necessity for Cersei, especially because she has such sil silver shoulders, like, on her costume in the movie. She's holding a sword that originated in the Lego Ninjago movie. But now let's talk about the bad. This face is absolute freaking garbage. 
first of all, like just based on the face print alone, Lego still can't center the mouth under the eyes. That is a really, really stupid problem. I don't know why that's persisting. And second of all, why the heck would they give her this face? Gemma Chan doesn't look like that. Like, it doesn't make any sense to me. I don't know why they would reuse this face over, like, so many other ones. Like, this is the one used on Tina Goldstein and Monica from Friends. I mean, for God's sakes, Gemma Chan is East Asian. She is not white. So that annoys me um, because there's nothing wrong with reusing, you know, like, Caucasian face prints for East Asian characters. If they look similar and have the same skin tone, Gemma Chan does have a similar skin tone, but this just doesn't look like her whatsoever, and Cersei doesn't really seem to be smiling like that in the movie, although, of course, we only have trailers to go on. I also really don't like this hairpiece. This whole, like, swept over the back, kind of, like, ruffled edges look looks nothing like what she looks like in the movie. The princess hairpiece with the braid would be much, much better, so I don't know why Lego didn't give her that piece. Her back printing is nice, but the alternate face is also terrible. I just, I don't like this face. Um, in general, it kind of annoys me, and like, and it definitely doesn't work for Cersei. And Cersei's the main character of this movie. I don't know why Lego keeps dropping the ball on main characters. Like Shang-Chi, Captain Marvel, and yes, Cersei's part of an ensemble of 10 superheroes. Um, but still, she should have gotten a new face print. I've already talked about Icarus in my Eternals Aerial Assault review, which you guys can check out now. I don't really like this figure that much either. Um, again, for the face and the hair, hair is too light. The face is just not good. He's holding a couple of golden sighs. Those are nice pieces, always nice to get. He does have some cool back printing, and he's got an angry alternate face, but, I mean, the man's main power is laser eyes. He should have a laser eye face. There's only one side build in this set, this little deviant, which is described as a deviant bat. Um, I think that this thing is actually kind of cute. Its wings are built in pretty much the exact same way as the wings from the Eternals Aerial Assault Deviant. He's got like, you know, the same little claws at the tips. Um, and I love these iridescent black pieces that are being used. Also, with, with the way these wings are built, it's really easy to get like a nice kind of just like movement motion. Like, I, I don't know how to describe it. Sorry, I went off camera a little bit. But you can really like easily make it look like the wings are flowing, which I appreciate. It's got a little tail back here and then just some spikes and the regular deviant color scheme. We've got a printed set of eyes up here. Again, same as the Eternals Aerial Assault guy and some like small horns. This thing really does kind of just look like a baby version of the deviant in that small set. Um, and maybe it is for all we know. It's also got a sticker down there. Um, completely unnecessary. Um, I mean, it's cool to get detail, but I mean, did we really need a sticker for something that, that's never going to be seen? And then you've just got some little legs back here, again, with more of those movable Wolverine claws. And this is probably my least favorite part of the build, because I feel like it's just really easy for it to kind of get knocked out of the position that you want it to stay in. But for something so small, it is pretty decent. And I mean, that pretty much does it for this guy. Probably my least favorite deviant just because it is so much like smaller and weaker than the rest of them. So as the name of the set would suggest, the main build here is Arishem. Arishem the Judge is one of the Celestials, which are godlike beings that created the universe or were there at the dawn of time. It's kind of unclear. Obviously, the MCU is going to be adapting them, um, you know, to fit their own universe for the movies. But in the comics, like I said, he's the judge. I think he's the one that you know, judges whether civilizations should be allowed to live or die. And based on the trailers, in which he's definitely the most marketed celestial so far, he seems to be the creator of the Eternals. Um, there's a lot of shots of him, like, unfurling his hand and stuff like that. And there's a statue of him in the Eternals ship, the Domo. So I'm really excited to see how he figures into the movie, um, because I just think Celestials are really cool. And like I said in the intro, these guys are, like, bigger than planets, much, much bigger than planets. There's a shot of him, like, hovering above Earth, and Earth is probably, like, um, like, it's probably only, like, three times the size of Earth, but still, like, Earth being, you know, the size of half of this thing, that's a pretty big creature. So I'm really glad that LEGO made a Celestial at all, even though it is in such a small scale. Because these guys are space gods, though, you do have some compromises, and unfortunately, the feet are definitely the worst part of this model. So I really like the look of the legs just straight on. You know, you've got a bunch of stickers in the set, honestly, kind of too many. 
Um, but just starting down here, you do have like all of these nice angular pieces. The problem is it's all very gappy because these are all just kind of on either ratcheted joints or um, just regular like clip joints. And so they're really easy to see through. And inside you can see that there's just like these Technic beams and those Technic beams are attached to more Technic beams that the entire thing rests on. And that just doesn't look good to me. Um, I don't like it. I understand that, you know, these guys, it seems like they don't have legs because it seems like they just kind of go floating through space, which is cool. These are really awesome pieces, by the way, again, in that kind of satiny transparent black color. Um, so it had to be stable, but like, God, this is ugly. Um, I mean, they don't make Technic pieces in dark red, so I don't really know what else LEGO could have done, but it just looks really bad. I wish they had done something more to cover it up, like cover this up with more transparent pieces, add red to the sides of this beam, because you can just see kind of how bad it looks, like right here. Like, it's just, it's so empty and open, and I really don't like that. Also, like I said, way too many stickers. You have three per like kind of lower leg, so that's already six, and we haven't even gotten to the majority of the set yet. Once you get higher, it does, it does get a little bit better. I really love all of these pentagonal tiles, and the stickers on them are gorgeous. It's just, again, there's so many. There's another five right off the bat, so we're already at 11 stickers, and we haven't even gotten to this guy's chest yet. So... Again, it frustrates me, but they look so good, I can't really complain. I do think the ones down below are a little bit superfluous, like we don't really need them. Um, but these ones look really good, and I like those. Now, this does actually have knees. You know, like most mech-like Lego builds don't have knees. This one does, which is cool. It just also means that it kind of tends to fall over a little bit. Um, like when I was kind of trying to move the camera up, this guy just bent at the knees and like fully fell face forward into my tripod. So that's kind of annoying, but also kind of unavoidable. And then you've just got regular click hinges. Like you can see, like this isn't like a regular mech um, because it's like, because the celestials are so spindly and like otherworldly and robotic. So he's got very weak hips, if I do say so myself. And you can, you know, just move these as you would regular ratcheted joints. And the knees are cool, like they do allow for like some good movements and having the dishes at the bottom actually helps you balance this thing in some interesting poses. So we'll do full posing later, but it's almost like you can make him walk on his tiptoes. And again, these are regular, you know, ball and socket joints. So you've got a full range of motion out of those. And then the sides of the legs aren't really anything special. You just got some, you know, more built up detailing with more of those pentagonal tiles. Arisham's chest is built up in an interesting way. I really like the shaping up here. It's kind of rocky and pretty bulky compared to how spindly his legs are. Um, and again, more stickers. These are a pain to apply on like tiles that small, but again, they look really good. So can I really complain? Um, and then we have these wonderful like transparent dark pink highlights. Those look fantastic. And again, just like the movie. I mean, they're a little bit more ready orangish in the movie. Um, but I think it looks really, really good, you know, considering what Lego has to work with. And speaking of reddish orangish glow, you'll notice that he kind of has like almost an arc reactor style design in the center of his chest. And there's actually a light brick behind that. So, I mean, it's pretty well lit over here. So you can see it shine through, but you don't really get the full effect with all the lights on. So let me try turning them off. So sorry it's so dark, but when you push on the light brick, it does give a pretty cool glow, and I guess the pink tries to make it look more pinkish, but it really is just still that kind of orangey color, which is fine, because he does have an, a slightly orangey glow in the movie. So getting up to Arisham's head, I think that this could have been a little bit more successful, because I just feel like it's a little bit small, especially proportionate to his body, but it does get all of, you know, the important details, paramount of which are his six eyes. Um, I think that these were captured surprisingly well in Lego. They're just built using three of these one by two rounded plates with hollow studs. And then inside are six of these vibrant coral nozzle pieces. So that's a really interesting. I wasn't expecting that, but I think it looks really good. And then you've just got built up detail around the sides. This also isn't like quite as fragile as I expected it would be just based on looks. And he's got this um, kind of like fender piece almost, or like roll cage piece. It almost looks like he's like he has an antenna or like a Bluetooth earpiece, like he's talking to someone. Um, but I don't know what that actually is in universe. And the other side kind of shows you the detail a little bit better. And then right on top, he does have a couple more stickers. So again, more stickers, but again, they still look good. So at least there's that. 
And then to finish up with the arms, I really like these shoulder pads that he has going on. Um, I do think some of the bulk of this guy is lost in Lego because he's like very beefy up here in the actual movie. Like he goes from like real skinny to real beefy like really quickly. Um, and in Lego, it does just look like he's wearing, you know, like kind of sh like shoulder pads. Like he looks like he went out to the store and bought giant shoulder pads to make him look bigger. Um, but I really like them. I love the use of these triangular, like, half tiles. And you can actually adjust these. Like, you can lift up these flaps. And you can also move these up and down. So they do move, like, as you reposition the arms. And again, I really like that. And again, you can see what his knees do to him. Makes it kind of hard to pose. But on top, you do have more of those trans dark pink highlights. And two more stickers, of course. Um, continuing just that same kind of tendril-y um, red and, like gunmetal gray pattern and his arms are built in the exact same way you do have another one of those ratcheted like ball and socket joints up there although of course the movement's a little bit limited outwards because of those shoulder pads um, but then you just have an elbow joint over here so that's interesting and the way these joints are made they do have a little bit of side to side motion um, so I think that works out pretty well it's just not something I'm really necessarily used to but the hands are definitely my favorite part. So you've got more of those um, triangular tiles. Stud shooters on the end, you guys know how those work. You've got a little thumb off to the side here and then these individual fingers. So you can kind of unfurl those. Although again, the fingers do seem small compared to the size of you know the entire build, but maybe that's just how it is in the movie. But the hand has my absolute favorite play feature of maybe any of the Eternals sets. Um, I'm really obsessed with this, and you guys are going to find out why. So you've got an exposed, um, like kind of like one by two stud space that's attached on a bracket. And what that is, is for holding minifigures. So you just have to turn it up so that the stud shooter is, you know, facing down. And then you just take a minifigure's legs and connect it right here. And then you can kind of make it, you know, look like it's holding them, or it can be kind of like, or he can be like kind of unfurling his fingers. But the idea here is that this is going to be like what I'm assuming is going to be a very, very iconic shot in the movie. And I have spent so long like analyzing this set. I've spent so long taking pictures of it because oh, don't fall over on me again. This thing's fallen over like three times during this review. Um, but the idea here is that is that he can kind of present Ajax to the viewer. And I have and I, I like positioning it with Arish, I'm like looking at her, like he's a proud dad. Um, so this is my quick approximation at that, but I've taken so many photos of this. You can check one out on my Instagram right now. And that is what I put in the thumbnail because I think that this is gonna be like the most iconic shot in the MCU. I think that at the dawn of time or like at the beginning of Earth's history or whatever, Arisham pulls up and he just like opens out his hand and he's like, look, let there be Eternals. And I just think that um, it's going to be really cool. And Lego seems to be pushing it quite a bit because this is literally advertised as a play feature on the box. Like putting Ajax in RSM's hand like this is advertised as a play feature. So I'm expecting this to be like a really, really nice shot in the movie. And like I said, the other hand can do that too, but um, I'm not paying attention to that hand because Lego shows it in this hand. So that's what I'm going to trust. And here's a quick look at RSM from the back. It's not super unfinished. I do wish that there was like a button for the light brick or something because you do have to get like your whole finger in there. And I'd like it if something just sticked out a little bit. As for posing, I'm going to show you guys what my favorite thing to do with RSM is. And let me just take Ajax out of there. Um, I did this by accident, like right after I finished building it when I was trying to pose it. But look at this. He can do the stanky leg. Um, I think that this is, like, really, really funny. I think it's hilarious that, like, the side range of motion on the knees allows you to bend his legs like that. And, um, and yeah, I think you can just get a lot of funny poses out of this thing. Sadly, you can't really get him to balance on one leg. I'm trying it, and I keep, like... Okay, whoops. I keep almost getting it, but these legs are just too weak, as you saw by the fact that it just broke off at the knee. Like, there's too much flex down here. And again, don't know what Lego could have done for that, but um, it's just it's just not great. Like I just I just don't love the legs. I feel like this thing is so top heavy. It always wants to just fall over and break, and that does irritate me. 
You can get RSM into a walking pose with a bit of work. My problem is I don't like splaying the hips out again because RSM is supposed to be like so kind of like stick thin. I don't want to spread the hips like I just want him to stand like kind of straight up like a pencil. Um, and so I don't like this look like this makes him look too big to me. This makes it look more like a mech rather than the celestial it's supposed to be. Um, but you can get it into a walking pose. Again, it's just the problem's all in like the weight up here and it does want to bend at the knees. So if you get it into a pose like this, this is actually surprisingly more stable than I thought. Like I really thought if I just messed around with it a little bit, it would fall. Um, but yeah, it's all about kind of just finding what's good for you. But I think that's enough posing for now. So let's go ahead and wrap up this review. Here are the extra pieces. We've got a bunch of stud shooter shots, and then I've kind of put the more interesting ones up here. A lot of weapons, which is nice to see. And here is the empty sticker sheet, which I don't usually show, but this gives you an idea of just how many um, stickers there are, especially of repeating designs. Like, I know that it's unfeasible to print everything, but I really feel like these things should have been printed at least. It's just kind of an insane amount. Here's the box for this set. It's kind of that typical like $50 box size, very thin on top though. And I love this art of Arsham floating through space. It's funny because they've tried to portray like the different scales here um, with the minifigures fighting the deviant. Um, but Arsham is still not to scale with Earth because he's much bigger than that. We've got like the concept art of the characters in the corner. You can see how inaccurate Cersei's hair is there, um, which I really don't like. Again, it's not like kind of swept behind her head like that. Um, and then for Ajax, I think it's hilarious because every single time I've seen this like shot of her or really most art of her, she is wearing her crown. So it feels like Lego just managed to find one image of her not wearing it so that, you know, people wouldn't think that the minifigure is inaccurate. So I find that to be kind of funny. And then we do have this beautiful artwork on the side. This is like my favorite part of the Eternals boxes of like all of the different minifigures. And then at the back, sorry I'm spending so much time on this box. I just think it's really, really pretty. Like one of the prettiest Lego boxes ever. Um, we've got this really nice shot of RSM kind of like hovering over everything. And then there's what I was saying about Lego advertising the Ajax hand holding as a play feature. The instruction manual for this set is very tall, but it gives us more of that beautiful space vista to look at. Um, and then at the back, we do have an ad for the other Eternal sets. It's just kind of weird because it's squeezed into this portrait format instead of landscape like the other sets. I do like this set quite a bit. Honestly, I didn't realize how terribly articulated it was at the knees until I filmed this review. Um, because I just, I think it looks really good on display. I love the design for the most part. I just, um, I mean, I forgot to mention this, but I don't like all the gray that sticks out. That does bother me. And then like all of the Technic stuff at the legs, that also bothers me. I didn't expect it to have such like giant kind of like paddle beam feet. But I don't, I don't know. It's just, it's tough because like I, like I said, I think it's a great display piece. I just don't think it's like the greatest like toy. Legos made better $60 mech-like sets than this before. Um, and I just, I don't know, I, I'm still glad it exists. I'm glad that Lego made a Celestial. I think we've got great exclusive minifigures here. It's just that for $60, it feels a little bit overpriced. Like, I don't want to say it should be 50 because that does feel too low for a set of this size. So I think it's worth full price, but it's kind of like the same issue I had with the Deviant Ambush set is if it's going to be that price, we should have something else here. I would not have hesitated to say that this is definitely worth $60 if it had like a new crown mold for Ajax or if some of those pieces were printed, you know, something like that. Um, again, the arm printing thing that I keep coming back to on the minifigures, that's not realistic. So I like, it, like I say, it might be nice, but I don't think Lego would ever actually do it. But Ajax getting a crown mold, I think that was very doable. And in a set that's $60, but feels more like it should be $55 if Lego had a price point like that, um, I think Ajax should have gotten a new mold. So that's how I feel about this set. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe, and check out my website, goldenninja3000.com, and I'll see you guys with more videos soon. Bye for now.